Hey guys, I'm Jake Manock, and this video is about how to heal avoidant attachment. Now, huge topic for today, huge topic. A lot of people ask me all the time, avoidant attachment, avoidant attachment, what am I dating a guy who's an avoidant? Few things to consider. Look, firstly, I'm gonna give you five tips on how to heal an avoidant attachment so you can actually have a 10 out of 10 relationship, number five being the most important, okay? The first thing to consider, severity. What's the severity like, guys? Now, let's have a think about what avoidant attachment actually means, okay? Because it can be a little bit confusing. Avoidant attachment. It can mean a lot of things. It's basically someone who avoids. They avoid something. They avoid a hard conversation. Now, realistically, whoever we are, guys, we're going to avoid some hard conversations, aren't we? But why? Have a think about it. Have you ever avoided a hard conversation? I know I have, okay? Not on purpose. But if you're dating someone you're in a relationship or you're dating someone and they hit you with a hard question or you're having a hard conversation, you go, whoa. And your brain automatically, you, it feels like you're sort of going a fight or flight, doesn't it? You go, whoa, I don't know about this. I don't know, is this, I don't want to have this conversation. I want to run, yeah? That's very normal. Even though you know in your mind running away is going to cause more damage than slowly talking through it. So the, one of the main things, the first tip I want you to consider is severity. If you start dating a guy and the severity is absolutely terrible, like you say something very simple like, hey, I love talking to you, when are you gonna ask me on a date? And he avoids the conversation and, and swifts to someone else, you go, man, where's his level of courage? Yeah, is, it, is he super avoidant? Or is he just a little bit avoidant? Or is he has no, it doesn't avoid anything, just super courageous? We're all on the level somewhere, aren't we? What's the severity? If it's really bad, girls, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time, okay? And guys too, if you're a guy watching this, if you meet someone and they're just super fearful, they have so much fear, they're like, no, 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 I can't do anything, I'm scared. They're too much hard work. It's too hard, get out of there. You're honestly wasting your time, which I know is hard for a lot of you guys to hear. A lot of you guys are wasting time. The amount of people, as you know, as you guys know, a lot of you guys have done free calls with me. You can book on a free call with me. The amount of free calls I do with people who are dating the wrong people, I say, hey, end it. Get out of there. You're wasting your time. All the time. All the time. It's that's the first tip. Severity. Think about what the severity is. If you go, he avoids some hard conversations, but in general, he's a pretty good communicator. Good. That's not bad. That's totally fine. All human beings avoid some situations and some conversations. It'd be weird if they didn't, okay? It's normal as a human being to have a certain level of fear or uncomfortableness in certain situations. That's normal, that's tip one. Now let's talk about how do we get through it. A lot of people don't understand timing. Number timing is number two. You can't just do everything at 100 miles an hour and expect everything's gonna be okay. I call this technique time over time. Time over time, okay? Basically what time over time means is you gotta see someone the right amount. Why? Because human beings have emotions, right? We also have knowledge. We wanna make sure the, how we feel about somebody and what we know about them goes up at the same pace, okay? If our emotions go up too fast and what we know is down here, we're gonna, it's gonna go really bad. And I'm sure you guys have done it, I know I have, okay? Also, if you don't see them enough, then your knowledge of them is up here and the emotions are down here, right? So what is the right amount of time? What I recommend for time over time to be done perfectly, what I recommend is seeing them once a month, <laughs> correction, once a week for the first month. Once a week for the first month, in the second month, see them twice a week, and then the third month, just see them all the time, okay? That's what I call time over time. That's gonna allow your knowledge and the emotion to go up at the right pace to fall in love in a healthy time, time over time. That's gonna help with avoidance a lot because they're not gonna feel rushed. Now the problem is avoidance are naturally a little bit more fearful. Maybe they've been burnt in the past, maybe they're just naturally a bit more scared in life, whatever it is, right? Whatever it is, they're feeling a little bit more fearful. So you gotta go a bit slow with them, help them through it, work them through a little bit, not going boom, really fast. It's too much, they feel like they're losing control and that's gonna sabotage the relationship. You gotta do it at the right pace. For example, um, Around the six month mark, seven month mark, when me and my wife, when my wife moved in with me many years ago now, we're married and have kids now, my house was a pretty typical bachelor type pad, right? 
movie po- pictures, movie uh, posters on the wall. The furniture was secondhand, average furniture sort of thing. It was, it wasn't dirty. I was, I'm pretty clean, but it was uh, just boyish, I guess. <laughs> she didn't really like it. Obviously, she wanted to girl it up, and she said, "I want to get rid of this. I want to get rid of that." I went, "I like that poster. I like that poster. You're not getting rid of anything. I like that stuff." She went, "Oh, okay, okay," and pulled back a little bit. And she, th- I, I know she thought to herself at the time, okay, I'm gonna have to do this slowly. And slowly over the next two years, she slowly turned that ha- that house into a nice home by really girling it up, making it all pretty, slowly get rid- getting rid of those old boyish posters. And it looks better now, okay? But the thing is, I wanted to avoid that. I was a little bit avoided in that time. You gotta do it slowly, you gotta do it at the right pace. That's why time over time is important, guys, yeah? Time over time is really, 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 really important. Now, number three is emotion, okay? So we've got severity, we've got timing, now we've got emotion. Emotion is really, really important, okay? How they feel about you is gonna determine their level of willingness. Now, what does that mean? To put it simply, if someone doesn't like you, they're not gonna to wanna to do what you want. If it doesn't make sense to you guys, have a think about have a think about your situation. Just think about where your life's at. Think about, think about someone who you don't like. Do you wanna have a hard conversation with them? Do you wanna do what they want? Are you motivated to go out of your way for them? Because realistically, when you're dealing with an avoidant guys or something someone wants to avoid, what you're doing is you're pushing them to a place that they don't wanna be and having a conversation they don't wanna have and change things about their life where they're not particularly motivated to do. But why are they doing it? Love. They're doing it out of love. How much they love you. How much do they love you? When you have kids, guys, you might have to wake up at 7 a.m. on a Sunday to drive your kid to soccer. Do you want to do that? Not particularly. Are you happy to do it for your kid? 100%. Why? Because you love them a lot. Would you happily do it for the neighbor's kid? No way. Not a chance. You see what I mean? How much do you love them? And it's determined on the motivation behind it. What does that mean? At the end of the day, if you want someone to heal past the avoidance, you've got to get the emotions in the right spot. It's got to be a 10 out of 10. That's why you guys hear me talk about building attraction, masculine, feminine energy, courtship, intimacy, and communication. The first one, building attraction. The more you build up attraction, the better the relationship's going to be, the more they're going to love you, and the more they're going to get past those awkward stages. It's, it's what I call hard conversations, guys. Hard conversations. There's a million hard conversations you need to have. A million. Yeah. It might be about finances, chores in the household, raising kids, where to go on holidays, your future goals. There's a million. Life's serious, guys. There's a million things to talk about, a million discussions you gotta have. You're gonna have to have those discussions. How can you have those discussions properly? Emotion, you gotta make sure they love you deeply. So you gotta constantly raise attraction. The higher the attraction is, the easier the hard conversations are. I want you to remember that. The more you raise attraction, the more they like you, the easier those hard conversations are. How do you get them to like you? If you're a woman watching this, you can get a guy to like you a lot more if you step into that feminine energy and you remain in that feminine energy, which is nurturing, caring, supportive, and joyous. The more feminine you are, the more he's gonna like you. A lot of you girls have a lot of trouble with feminine energy. You're fearful, you think you can do everything yourself, you're hyper-independent, I don't want anyone's help, I don't wanna be feminine, Um, and you just have all these negative beliefs in your head. That makes you a lot less likable, okay? The more joyous and the more feminine you are, the more attractive you are. It's as simple as that. I know it can be frustrating for a lot of girls. I understand. I understand. No one's taught you about it, yeah? No one's taught you about it. You don't know what it means. There's a lot of misconceptions about it. It's frustrating. I understand. It takes practice. When I'm coaching somebody, I've coached thousands of people. When I'm coaching a girl how to step into a feminine energy, it usually realistically takes her probably two or three months of practicing and me coaching her all the time to really get good at it. So we got the five tips so far, guys. We've got severity, making sure you choose someone with severity is not too bad, so it's not just constantly hard work. I'm sure a lot of you guys before have picked someone and it's been nothing but hard work. You don't want that, okay? Timing, making sure you're doing the hard things at the right time and remembering time over time. Don't see them 10 times in the first week. It's not gonna work. Okay, then you also have emotion, okay? The more he loves you, the more he's gonna be able to have the hard conversations. Number four is how to have the hard conversations. Dating an avoidant, dating someone who has fear in their heart is fairly common in the 21st century. I'm not sure what it was like in the 20th century. I'm not sure what it was like in 
the 19th century. But in the 21st century, dating people who have fear in their hearts seems to be fairly common. What can you do about it? How do you have hard conversations? Even if the relationships are 10 out of 10, you're both madly in love with each other. So the timing, the severity, the emotions, everything's right. How do you actually have a hard conversation? You gotta follow a few rules. Some of those rules are don't walk away. Don't walk away. When you start having a hard conversation with someone, even if they are avoidant, even if you're avoidant, keep going. Breathe, keep going, okay? Just keep going. You breathe, you gotta keep talking. Keep going. Just like going through a marathon, you gotta keep going. You can't stop halfway and go, I'm gonna walk away. You can't, you gotta keep going. You can't get aggressive. Don't be aggressive. You're not having an argument. It's a hard conversation. Don't argue, okay? Don't do it, okay? Nice and easy. Keep the conversation rolling. Be polite, treat them nicely, okay? And use team words. You're a team. You and your partner are a team. You're dating someone, you're a team. It's not, you do this, I do that. This is yours, this is mine. This is your problem, this is my problem. No, this is what we should do. This is best for us. We are going to do this. This is our house, whatever. Use team words, yeah? Make sense? Don't be disrespectful, don't be aggressive, don't yell, don't call them names, don't walk away. And use physical touch. Physical touch is brilliant. While you're talking to someone, hold their hand, hold their arm, look into their eyes. That body language, it says a lot. Just using your words, what you communicate is much more than just your words, okay? So use body language, use touch. Touch is very, 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 very powerful, guys. Okay, super important. How to heal and avoid an attachment. Severity, timing, emotion, doing hard conversations properly. And then we have proof and trust. <sighs> Number five, the most important one, proof and trust. As human beings, if you have fear in your heart, and tell me if you agree, put in the comments if you agree, it's easier to fall in love than trust somebody. Put in the comments if you agree. It's pretty crazy. You can fall in love in six weeks, meet someone today, six weeks later, you're madly in love, think they're the best person in the world. Do you fully trust them? No. Would you trust them with your wallet? No. Is that crazy? You're madly in love, but you don't trust them. How long does it take to get that trust, guys? Some people who are super, super fearful may take a year, two years to fully trust somebody, to fully trust them. How can you gain someone's trust? Doing the right stuff consecutively, time over time over time over time for several years in a row with high attraction. It's not gonna be easy. You have to have super high integrity. You gotta always do the right thing, never lie, Never cheat them ever out of anything, okay? You gotta do the right thing consecutively time over time to gain that trust. And then you've healed the attachment. You've healed the avoidant. They won't be avoidant from you anymore. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, this is not easy work. I, I wish, I wish it was easy, guys. I wish I could turn around and say, guys, do this one thing, 10 seconds done, issue solved, but it's not. Achieving a 10 out of 10 relationship, guys, is, is not easy, it's incredibly difficult. A lot of people out there think achieving a great relationship is easy. When you start looking into it, it's incredibly difficult. Same note, it is the best thing you'll ever achieve. By far the best thing I've ever achieved is the relationship I have with my wife. By far, not, not even close. I have a super successful company. This coaching company is super successful. Beautiful kids, everything's amazing. Good health. By far the best thing I have is my relationship with my wife. Easily, not even close. Not even close, okay? But you gotta know this stuff that I just talked about. Making sure you choose someone where the severity is not too bad. The timing's right, the emotion's right. You know how to have hard conversations and communicate effectively, and you've done through proof, and they trust you. They trust you fully, okay? Trust is, if you think of trust like a, like a scale, 10 out of 10 trust is what I feel for my wife. Trust her completely in all situations, 110%. Trust her more than I trust myself, right? When I first met her, it was maybe a, a six out of 10. How long did it take to get from a six out of 10 to a 10 out of 10? Probably about a year to two years, okay? We've been together many, many years now, but at least a year to get from a six to a 10. How long did it take to fall in love? Six to eight weeks? Think about that, think about that. Now, if I trust her a seven out of 10, do I trust her? Yeah. Do I trust her completely 110% 10 out of 10 at that stage? No. There is a difference between seven out of 10 trust and 10 out of 10 trust. 
okay? So put in the comments, put in the comments, guys, if you agree with me that falling in love is easier than fully trusting someone 110%. Tell me what you think. I definitely think it is. I think a lot of people don't think about trust as a scale. Think about it as a scale, okay? People who have betrayed me, I trust them at zero or a one, yeah? Or a two. My wife's a 10, but she's the only person I trust 110%, by far, the only one. That's the five ways to heal an avoidant attachment, guys. If you do this work, which I just talked about, you will be successful. You can't rush it and you gotta do it right. I'm here to help. See you guys.